podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Hi everyone, I'm Carmen. You can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and I'll list some of the other things right here. And if you're a regular viewer, you may see that this is a different setup. For this episode, I thought to change it up a little bit. So I am filming in a different setting. So usually I sit over there, which is, there's my signature flower wall. Um, this is a new piece of furniture that I have and I'm just really pleased with it. And you can see Momo in the screen right here. This is her new sleeping spot. <laughs> and I have a new place to hang my things. So I'll talk about this one in a bit, but um, also here is a fun place for my finished samples. And I'm just, I'm loving just looking at them um, throughout the day. My desk is right here. So I just get to see them. They're out in the open. I make sure that, you know, they're not exposed to sunlight that much. So yeah, I quite like it. And you can see my hanging plant right there. I'll talk more about plants towards the end because I thought it was uh, quite fun to do that last time. So, and I have some news to share about plants. Um, so first up is my first finished object, which is the Olga cardigan. And I'm happy to finally finish this because it has been Three years it was 2018 19 20 and then 21 okay so this is the fourth year um, yes but it is finally done it is a pattern by Susan Walsh of pepper goose and it was published um, in Scapius yarn bookazine in the folk issue and last time I was very close to finishing. I I think I just added the uh, lower hem border after that, which is very cute and it was really fun to do. Um, it's similar to the uh, sleeve cuffs too. And then I sewed on the buttons this morning actually. Um, and I love how it looks. I, I love the flower squares and it just, it's so pretty and so well designed. Um, but here's the thing, <laughs> it doesn't fit me. <laughs> it's it's uh, too big for me very sadly. Um, yes. I have used a bigger yarn than the pattern call calls for, so it's totally my fault. Um, I made the smallest size in the pattern, which is, I think, a small, um, but this turned out like a large or perhaps even extra large. Um, and I didn't notice it that much when I was making it, but just um, the the neckline is too open for me. Like it is almost at my shoulders, and I'll I'll put it on for you in a bit. But um, yeah, just <laughs> it looks prettier on the hanger than on me. So, um, but you know, I'm still very happy that I made it. I learned a ton while making this. Um, <laughs> uh, especially that I should trust the pattern, uh, although I did make a few modifications here and there. Um, so, so there is the yarn, I modified that, and uh, in the button band it was supposed to um, end with crab stitch, and I just put a regular single crochet in the last uh, row because my crab stitch was uh, just I think it was too loose it was just curling too much um, and then here uh, just in the corners so I made a decrease here in these corners and some increases here because um, the pattern doesn't have increases and decreases in every uh, round and just as I pro progressed I thought it might cup 
in some places so um, I just added some increases and decreases to keep it flat um, which I think turned out very nicely um, and then I'm not sure if I just I, I probably just made a mistake but when I was starting the um, the border and right now I'm doubting whether I started on this side or on this side but um, the first kind of flower motif has to be centered in that diagonal section um, I think I started here so the first flower has to be centered in this diagonal section and the way the pattern was written it didn't end up in this diagonal section so it ended up too far that way I think so uh, so I did less stitches and then made sure that the flower was here so not sure if I I was thinking maybe I omitted a few um, border rows and then maybe I should have more stitches here? I don't know. But uh, that was just something that I noticed and uh, I went on Ravelry and I couldn't find a project that spoke in any detail about the lower hem edging. So I think it was just me. Um, and to be fair, because of me not doing the crab stitch, so uh, crab stitch is uh, single crochet and reverse. So that would mean that you start on this side and you work backwards to this side. And then you would start the lower hem from this point. But since I swapped it for single crochet, I started the last row of the button band here, then I worked all the way down to here, and since the first couple um, uh, rows of the lower hem is single crochet, I think, I just started the lower hem here instead of on this side. I, that probably matters. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, uh, I figured it out. Um, it looks great. I had lots of fun making this. And I was hoping that it would be kind of floaty on me. But um, sadly, it's, it's just too big. So I'm going to find someone um, that will um, like it and, you know, be able to wear it. Um, So, and I think when, when uh, trying it on that I, did, that I had always kind of scooted the arm up to, um, you know, the, the shoulder up to however high it would go and it just, it looked okay. But then um, the neckline is not here when I actually wear it. So it would be fine if I would just wear it loosely and kind of with the, um, with the button bands turned inwards. I think that would be fine. It still, it, it still looks big. But um, when I then actually close it, and I th also think I should have placed that button a little bit higher. <laughs> so when I close it, the, it's just almost falling off of my shoulders and it's just, it's just too big, sadly, but I do love it and I hope I'll be able to give it to someone who loves it too. It's not for me. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of disappointing because up until the blocking I thought it was going to fit me um, but then when I spread it out on the blocking board I thought hmm you know 
it might not. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just going to um, kind of gauge interest around um, my relatives <laughs> and see if I uh, can find someone who would love to have it and who is also, um, I know we say knit-worthy, but can we also say crochet-worthy? So I don't want to just give it to someone who will either not wear it or abuse it. <laughs> So yeah, we will see. I was looking forward to having a beautiful floaty lacy crochet cardigan, but yeah, that teaches me to actually follow the pattern. But um, yeah, it's still gorgeous. So I'm just going to place it here. And did you guys also see my mismatching buttons? So so they are all a different color, but I really like that. It does feel good to finally finish it though, um, after so many years of it being a work in progress. And I got to cross it off my progress board. Ta-da! <laughs> so yeah, it does really feel good to finish older works in progress. And then I also have a second finished object and you will have not seen this before. Uh, and it's also not knitting or crochet. <laughs> it's cross stitch. Um, yeah, I bought this very cute cross-stitch set um, last year, I think. There was a clearance sale at one of my favorite yarn stores. And, okay, I'll show you the picture first. And they have this little kit of a frog in a little suit with flowers. And I thought it was so cute. And I made him. <laughs> Isn't he cute? It took me two weeks to finish this from start to end. Um, yeah, but it was just a really cute, quick project. And I've never finished a cross-stitch project that, that soon. Um, Usually with cross stitch or embroidery, I just like to begin, but then somewhere along the way, it just gets forgotten. I have a lot of unfinished cross stitch pieces. So uh, who knows, that might be one of my next long languishing works in progress to finish. But I just think he's so cute. And uh, so the back is very, um, yeah, I, I'm not very precious about the back of cross stitch. I just um, kind of sewed it shut. And what I did was I put a little note in here um, with my name and the, the dates that I worked on it, because I think that might be nice. Um, yeah, so that, that was a surprise. Yeah, but I just uh, I just needed some distraction and um, you know, when I first started knitting and crocheting, it was really uh, therapeutic, very um, meditative for me. Um, but as I got better, I could I could think while knitting. I mean, <laughs> I can think while cross-stitching, but something about uh, a new craft or, yeah, or maybe, I don't know, something, or something about a new craft or 
something that you do that totally occupies your brain space so that you don't have any brain space to think about anything else. Um, that is just really relaxing for me. And uh, knitting and crocheting doesn't really do that for me anymore because I can do it mindlessly. Um, not all patterns, but the kind of patterns I like to make. Uh, so knitting and crochet has become more of a, okay, I, I do this while listen, listening to music or podcasts or while watching TV, but cross stitch, uh, for me is, I really have to keep my head in the game because, um, one misplaced box of color and yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, it's not as easy to fix a mistake afterwards because if you want to undo a specific stitch, there is a big chance you have to undo a whole bunch of other stitches too. Um, yeah, so that was just very meditative for me and I really like it. And then up next is a work in progress that you have seen last time and it's right there. So this little cubby is for my large work in project that I keep, work in project? Work in progress that I keep in this metal um, kind of bowl. And it is my sweater. So I'm still calling this the, the um, strawberry latte sweater. <laughs> just because with the white and the pinks that I'm using, I just, it, it, it was a name that popped up. So I am getting close to sleeve separation. Um, I was in this white stripe uh, last time and now I, I've added the green stripe. Um, this is the front. It doesn't really matter right now because it's all <laughs> the same. <laughs> it looks like a blob with a turtleneck. Um, yeah, and yeah, I'm kind of, I'm at the point where I have to check whether I'm at the right place to um, split for the sleeves. But in order to check, I have to uh, insert a second needle in there so I have enough length so that I can stretch it out and put it on. Um, and I just find that really tedious um, and time consuming. Uh, so we haven't done that yet. Um, Yes, and this one will be a bit higher up than my other uh, sweaters. I made the ribbing, I don't know if I made it too tight, um, but um, it'll block out. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's too tight, but, uh, but it does mean because it's tighter that, um, that it is also higher up than, um, than my other sweaters. And I'm basing this sweater off a sweater that I, that I have already made. Um, and so I'm kind of checking the, uh, the amounts of rounds against that sweater, but because this one is higher, it just, um, I don't know if I can base it off of that sweater. So that's why I have to kind of stop and check um, but so far I am really liking it and I'm just hoping that it will look okay because um, striping and yokes uh, as in a round yoke sweater I, I haven't seen that much usually uh, when people do stripey sweaters it's uh, usually a drop shoulder or a raglan type of shoulder um, and I'm just hoping that this will still look great. I think it will, but I just, I can't really, um, envision it right now. <laughs> um, the 
So the green stripe that I added was a mini that I got from Jufrau Lanzafans. So I ordered this, uh, this yarn from her from uh, Hatchock Fibers, which is called Damsel. It's really, really pretty. It's uh, the first stripe here. And I also ordered a surprise box, uh, which included one big skein and then two minis, one of which was this one, no, three minis, uh, one of which uh, was the green one and one of the others is this purple one. And I'm going to use this one as well. And I also added this one to the mix, which is a yarn by Ushitita that, uh, that I bought years ago, I think four or five years ago, um, because I think that would go really nicely. And I'm just really, really loving this project because I have two skeins of white, which I had thought, okay, maybe I'll throw in a third color and make a huge shawl. Um, but now I'm able to make a sweater and use up all kinds of oddments in my stash or single skeins. This is a woolen vine skein and I've already knit uh, a headband using this. Um, but this is just perfect because uh, a lot of the time I buy similar colors, but they're not similar enough for a fade sweater or, you know, perhaps they would be, but this is just less brain work. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really liking this. So yeah, it, and if it works out, I'm going to write up the pattern for this. Um, so yeah, because I'm already basing it off of one of my existing patterns. So um, I'm checking whether I need to make any adjustments and you know, I have made some modifications already, but yeah, I'm just really, really enjoying this. Okay, I had to take a little break because my camera needed to cool off. Uh, so in the meantime, here's what I did. Ta-da! I put it on the second needle and now <laughs> I want to try it on, but okay. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Trying on a sweater on the hottest day of the year so far. It's kind of feeling like it's choking me right now. It'll block out. It'll block out. Is this weird? It feels like I have a floating head on like a plate. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. I can I can check whether I need to split for the sleeves later. I think I need to keep going for just a couple more rounds. So, what do we think? Um I marked this as 20%, I think. Yes. How much? Mm -hmm. hey. oh. <laughs> it's half past four, and during in between four and five, she always wants to um, go outside. So, um, okay. So, what what percentage is a yoke of a sweater? I don't know if I have the brains to, to think about this right now. I'm just going to mark it a little bit further because honestly, I just did this bit. So it's not that much. Let's not overthink this. There. Ta-da. <laughs> but looking at it now, I am... I'm, I'm still not confident, but I think that it will look great. I think, I think. <laughs> All right, next thing is a new cast on. 
and um, and it is using the Scapius Downtown yarn. Maybe you'll remember the um, uh, the other new cast on with Scapius Downtown, the uh, gray and yellow one. That was just one long strip. Um, I haven't worked on that anymore. So, uh, so it's not making an appearance in this video. And it's not linked to this project because this is becoming a sock. Uh, yeah, because I wanted to um, have a sock on the needles. This one has a really fun pattern. It has a ribbed pattern, but it is twisting. And I put it on a cardboard thingy because <laughs> if I take it out, the sock looks like this. <laughs> and um, I, so this is a kid's sock size. Um, and I think due to the ribbing that it will fit a range of kids sizes um, and the idea behind the sock is that because it has uh, oh <laughs> I wanted to say twisted rib but of course we know twisted rib as something different so um, spiraling rib this means uh, that you'll be able to fit the sock without putting in a heel. So, and I thought that's great for kids' socks because then you can just make it, you know, a long sock and it will be knee length when they're two years old, but it will be ankle length when they're seven years old. I don't know. I think this, this will fit um, kids from um, ages two to seven. That's the idea, but the thing is that <laughs> I don't really know children, so um, I do, you know, I do have relatives with small children, so I may have to ask them if their kids want to try this on because I do want to try it. And I want to take pictures of it while on actual feet because it looks terrible if you just want to take a picture of it lying down, especially since uh, these socks won't have heels, so yeah. Uh, I definitely need a pair <laughs> of kid feet to try this on. Oh, that sounds morbid. Um, I mean, <laughs> the feet attached to a kid. Oh god, I'm making it worse. Um, yes, kid socks. So, um, I think, I think these would work as well for adults, but, um, since, you know, our feet don't really you know, don't grow anymore. It's it's just easier to put in a heel. But for kids, you know, the heel might first be here and then, you know, the, the sock can kind of grow with them. And the name, so I first thought of the Dutch name for these socks, which will be Wokkel Sokke. I just love that name. Wokkel means kind of like spiral and Sokke means socks. Um, for the English name, I thought spiral socks was a little bit boring so um i think i'm gonna go with tornado toes um because you know since it's gonna be a kid's sock powder and i want it to be fun so yes tornado toes so i am going to put the uh foot shape back in there that looks much better and um, I have a couple ideas for this self-striping yarn and I'm still not sure whether I'm going to wait and publish them together as an ebook or that I'm going to publish them separately. So you'll have to bear with me on that. Um, yes, but this will be a pattern coming up. I'm not gonna say soon, I'm just gonna say sometime this year. <laughs> so yes, oh right, I have I have put them on my whip board. 
where I've just written twisty socks. Um, and I am, I think, halfway done with the first pair, so... So I've made this much progress. That was it for knitting for this episode. I do have some crochet to show you. Um, two granny squares. I made these granny squares a while uh, before, but um, I have now, I'll, I'll show you one first. So I have cut out this corner and I have mended it. So the light peach colored round I pretended as if that was damaged and then I mended it for my darn it mending masterclass on my patreon page this was my try out granny square also mended with purple I just you know it, it just went with both color schemes so yeah and it turned out that it was actually much easier than I thought um, so yeah, I was really excited to uh, to find that out and the video is already up on my Patreon page. Um, this is chapter 5 of the Darn It Masterclass and all videos are now up and they are available for Rosewood Willow and Elder Tear patrons. And every second week I am also uploading a designer talk video for my Elder Tear patrons. And last week I was talking about, about the Instagram swipe up and if it's really the holy grail of marketing that everyone thinks it is, uh, which was a really fun episode to do. And I'm planning lots more of exciting content for the next couple months. So do go over to my Patreon page if you think you might like it. All right, and now for the plant segment. So I have some news on the mango plant that is just up here. And it has grown quite a bit. Um, I don't think it was in this pot when I last showed you. And the, the leaves have just grown tremendously and I have a second uh, second one downstairs uh, which I'm gonna give away so I've just grown this from the seed of an uh, of a mango did I say avocado just now I meant mango <laughs> not sure if I said that um, so when you eat a mango and um, and you cut the the kind of meat off uh, and you find this core right and you can split that open and inside that is uh, is the seed and you want to split it open really gently um, and there uh, and you put it in water for five days and you <clears throat> put in fresh water each day and then after five days uh, it will have sprouted a um, root and then you can uh, put it in soil um and then you know keep it wet and then a couple days later uh it will have sprouted a um little plant <laughs> how do you say that part um and then you know it got leaves so it's really cute and much faster than avocado plant um growing so really really pleased with that. I've also taken some cuttings from my Epipremnum plant here. Uh, I think this is also sometimes called a potos, P-O-T-H-O-S, but uh, yeah, Epipremnum. Uh, I also have another one downstairs which is called Marble Queen because uh, it has uh, lots of white stripes. So uh, I just cut um, I just cut a couple, you know, a piece off one of the vines and you want to make sure that it has the, these little root bits at the back and then out of those they will grow new roots when you place them in water and you also want to make sure that they have fresh water every couple days. And now I actually think I can put them in soil because the roots are getting quite long. Um, yeah, and 
they have new leaves, so this is really exciting. So that is going really well. I'm also propagating some Pilea plants. Uh, I have four more babies over there. I have two two big plants, and I already took some of uh, some of the tinier plants off and repotted them. But now I saw that um, she had lots of tiny Pilea babies. So I've put them in jars with water and look at the roots. That's a lot of root growth. So I'm going to put these in soil too. Um, but I've run out of pots. <laughs> I've been, uh, I've just been stupid about it, and I've left most of my pots outside um, where they got wet, and then during winter they cracked because um, of the temperatures. So I had to throw away about four or five pots, which is stupid. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know. Most of the pots came from a thrift store, so they were very plain pots, and also I'm just, I'm not very sad about losing them, but you know, I rather, I would rather not throw stuff away, you know. Uh, so now I, th I store my pots inside the, the garage to hopefully keep them from uh, cracking. Um, yes, yeah, so that was my plant news, and also, I haven't told you about this, but, uh, we got a new Monstera, or I, I told you about that, but, uh, one of the branches of the Monstera was drooping down, drooping even further down, and I just thought, okay, maybe I doubt some roots and it's not able to pull itself up so so I just uh, grabbed some uh, twine and wrapped it around the uh, moss pole uh, but then it started drooping even further and there was a new leaf and I was really excited because I could see lots of um, um, I could see that the um, that the new leaf had lots of holes in it, which you want with a, with a Monstera, it's really pretty. Um, and it would have the new leaf for two weeks and it did not unfurl. And I was like, I remember with my first Monstera that when there was a new leaf, it would unfurl in a couple days. So what's wrong? And um, Mm, I just uh, started misting it regularly. I thought maybe the um, the air humidity is is too low. I, I read that somewhere online. And then I, I saw that the new leaf had a brown tip, uh, like the tip was brown. So I thought, oh, that's not good. Uh, and then I saw that the stem also had brown flecks on it, so I thought, that's not good. Uh, and then, you know, I, I googled... <laughs> I spent a lot of time on Google. Um, and they said to, to check your plant for pests, and I thought, no! You mean, I had a, a big bug infestation last year, and I thought, I really don't want to go through that again. Um, but couldn't find any bugs, and then I came across an article that said, well, it might be that you're underwatering, because a lot of the times when the stems droop is because, um, you've underwatered. And then, you know, very ambiguously, it also says, it also might be from overwatering. <laughs> it's like, great, that is so helpful. But uh, if you've overwatered, then uh, the leaves are um, most of the time also a bit yellow, and mine were not yellow at all. And I put it in a very big pot, and I heard that for Monstera that's not the best tactic because the roots can't reach the bottom and uh, can't drain up all the um, all the moisture that's in there, and I put a lot of those moisture beads in, in the, like, I think they are terracotta beads, um, in the bottom, and I think they might have soaked up all that water and left nothing for the Monstera, and the, the soil was always very dry, um, 
yeah, um, <laughs> I think just not having a Monstera for a year uh, made me forget how to care for it. So uh, over the last week I have kept a close eye on the soil and I've really, I've watered it quite a bit, uh, but I was very careful to not overwater. Um, and the leaf is unfurling, so I'm just really, really happy about it, and it seems like it's not drooping as much anymore. So I'm very happy because I thought, oh no, I'm gonna have to cut that branch off, and then it will look so, you know, uh, it will look much thinner, and yeah. I was already starting to get sad about it, but um, yeah, so I'm happy that that is working. Fingers crossed that it is that it will continue to work. So um, yeah, that was my plant update for you. And <laughs> because this has kind of become a regular thing, here's also a Netflix update. I have started watching The Bold Type and I really like it. Um, I finished all of uh, the New Amsterdam episodes. I think there is a season missing on Netflix. I hope they will uh, still put that on there, but uh, for what I have seen, it was great. I want to see more. Uh, yeah, so now I'm just a few episodes in the bull type and I can really recommend it as well. I really like it. Um, yeah, so that's an update for now. I hope you are all doing great. Uh, let me know what you are making in the comments. Are you knitting? Are you crocheting? Are you still using wool or have you moved on to cooler yarns such as cotton or linen or bamboo? Um, are you still wearing hand knit socks? I know that I'm not really wearing my hand knit socks anymore at the moment. Um, Cause to be fair, it's, it's really hot this week. So yeah. So yes, let me know what's new with you and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.